Hello friends, welcome to the help videos of Feed for Google Shopping app by Simprosis. In this video we are going to see the different options you get in the section of sync settings from Shopify, and how they affect your feed processing and submission to the Google, Facebook, and Microsoft in our app. Before moving to the video, please subscribe to our channel to get the tips and tricks about digital marketing, and press the bell icon to get notified instantly once we upload any new video. A lot of merchants ask us which option to be selected for different kind of use cases, and, normally we are clueless because we don't know your data, we don't know the priorities, we don't know your goals of Google Shopping. And let me be very frank, had we been aware of what is right for you, we would not have given them as an option for you. So it is better that you take the right calls with the right information and that's why we are preparing this video. So let us begin with the first option. The first option here says total products published on your store. These are the numbers which tell you the number of products published on your online store not on Google, or, not on Facebook, or, not on Microsoft. But these are numbers that tell us that this many numbers of the products are live on Shopify. And this number is used to calculate your charge. For example, if you have 50 products published on your store, and, you are submitting only 20 to Google or Facebook, or, Microsoft. Then the count showing over here should be 50 and that will be used to calculate the charge that you have to pay for this app every month. Next is, Notification Email. Now mostly whenever you land on this page for the first time then this email should be the email of the store owner. But if you are not the owner of the store and some other person like PPC agency or PPC manager and you are processing the feed on behalf of the store owner then you can change this email to your email address so that whenever the process gets completed, you get notified on that particular email. For example, in this case, I will change it to my email address, so whenever this process gets completed I will get notified on this email address. Now the next is, what are the products you want this app to pull from the Shopify? Does it have to be all the products or they are just from the one collection? If you select all products, right? You don't get to see the options of the collections over here. But the moment you switch to the collection process or collection method, we try to provide you some of the options. Like for example, do you want to have any one of the automated collections or any one of the manual collections? Then just proceed to the next steps of the syncing process. While working with this option, you must be aware that you can sync only one collection at a time, not the multiple collections. This option normally helps the merchants who are for example interested in marketing only one particular collection. Rather than going through all the products and selecting them in our app and excluding them in our app. If you are not sure which products you want to work with, or, if you are not sure which collection actually you want to sync with our app, you can select all the products, and, subsequent stages of the app's process, you can exclude the products from different submission channels. And in that process, you will be able to select the particular product that should be included for Google and another set of products can be included for Microsoft. So that is where you get a much better option to control the submission of the products to different marketing channels. Now here I am going with a demo collection. Now next is product title option or product title preference. Now here we have two options, one is default product title, and second one is SEO title. There is also a third option which is actually inside the app, once products are synced with our app, it is for customizing the title, or, in technical terms, keyword injection, in the titles. For now, let us see which one of these two should be selected. So default product title, here means this title. If you have anything over here normally you must have something over here. But if you select that option then the title of the product from this part will be picked up. And a second option is SEO title. The SEO title is somewhere down in the bottom of the page, where you modify the SEO content of the product page. Normally if you have not done anything about this, or, if you don't know much about this, we would recommend you to stick to the default product title because SEO titles are stored in meta fields, and, the meta fields updates takes lots of time to get processed by the app. Now the next is product description and again we have SEO description options that are just similar as the title. This is your regular description where you covered a lot of information about the product. 
And this is your SEO description where you just copy paste a snippet so that Google can render the right content when somebody is looking for this kind of product in the Google search results. In this case, if you are again not sure what to do, we would like to recommend that you should use default product description, not just because SEO descriptions are very short. They don't cover a lot of information about the product. Let us take an example of this one particular product. Here, we have a very very long description and it covers so many things. So covering the different aspects of the product is possible through default description only. So in that case you should select that one. Now the next option is variant options, whether you should submit the first variant only, or all variants. Normally we recommend you to submit all variants. If you are selling apparel products, if you are selling electronics and other kinds of products. The first variant option should be selected only when you are not allowed to advertise other variants of the products. Or sometimes they are just an extension of the main variant, they don't form another variant. For example, they are not colors, they are something else. They become add-on or if your preferences don't allow you to advertise all the variants, you can select the first variant only option. You should bear in mind that when you are submitting the first variant only option, we don't have any other option. It will always be the first variant of the sequence. So just keep that in mind. Now the next control or next option is whether you want to include the variant title into the main title of the product or not. Just to give you an example of this option, for example, you are selling iPhones. iPhones does not mean iPhone only, or, iPhone 11 Pro, so, iPhone 11 Pro is just a product, and, they have multiple variants of, let's say they have 128 GBs, or, 256 GBs storage, and, they have white color, or, gray color option. So, colors in these storage capacities are variants for this iPhone 11 Pro product and if somebody is looking for something like iPhone 11 Pro, white, 256 GB storage, and, if you have this kind of content appended in the product title of the results, then it definitely matches the search query of the product. If that is the priority or goal then you should select yes over here. Otherwise if your variant details are too long and they just lead to another issue of title length exceeding the specific character limit of different marketing platform, in that case, you would like to avoid the variants getting appended to the product title, so at that time you will have to select no, otherwise in most of the cases it can be yes. Now next is inventory policy, whether we have to follow the policy, or just ignore the policy, and follow the exact inventory counts only. This is something useful for only those merchants who are still selling products when they are out of stock, anticipating a restocking of the same product in a very near future. For example, today I may have one of the products out of stock but I will continue to take the orders, I will still show it as in stock on my store and on my Google Ads. So that whenever the inventory is restocked let's say it is happening tomorrow or day after tomorrow, I can fulfill those orders within the reasonable time frame. So if you select follow, then it will follow the inventory policy and inventory policy is something shown over here. Now, this is part of inventory policy, if you say, yes continue selling even when product is out of stock, so if this product goes out of stock, let's say it becomes minus 2. Despite having this as a minus 2 our app will submit them as, in stock. Your schema markup must also show it as in stock and Google will keep on showing the ad on this particular product, and, we will still keep getting the orders. But if you select, ignore, in that case we will just stick to this number. We will not look at this part. So if this says 0, or, minus, or, if it is less than 1 in any case, then we will submit this product as out of stock, in all the cases. Even if you are collecting orders on your online store through organic or direct traffic channels but you don't want to acquire the paid traffic for something like this, which is out of stock for now. Then you can select, ignore, in that case we will just stick to the exact inventory number which is shown here. Now the next is product image option, this is something, use the second image for a product having no variant. First of all, this option will work only for products which are single variant only or you are submitting the first variant only. Why is this required to submit the second image? 
Because a lot of merchants use their first image as a lifestyle image and Google normally recommends you to submit the images without any kind of background, without any kind of clutter or I would say the watermarks or some discount offers or something like that. You should have your image with product only and nothing else. In that case, if you have a primary image, or first image with something that is not in compliance with the Google's policy, then you can keep the second image that complies with the Google's policy, and then you can check this option over here in our app and once you do the re-sync at that time our app will start working with the second image which is in compliant with the Google's policy. But if you are not getting into this kind of issue, then you should keep it unchecked, and if you need any kind of support while controlling that option, you can write to our team, and we will try our best to help you out. Now the next is, submit additional images, when you check this box our app picks up all the images from the products from the Shopify and submit them to Google, and when we submit multiple images for the same product or the same variant, it become easy for Google to figure out which image is right for the product or variant, and shows it accordingly to the Googlers. Like this one, in this product we are submitting multiple images. For example, here you can see it. This is the product and here we are submitting 7 additional images and 8th main image. So here it is showing all of them. It helps Googlers to take the right call about a particular product, when they get maximum information about the product. Now the next is, submit a rich product description, or in technical terms submit a description with HTML tags. So in HTML tags, this is the description that we are submitting this product from our side. Although there is too much of HTML going into this one but right from the formatted HTML description helps Google's machine learning process to understand which part has to be shown on which page or which location on this product page. This snippets from the same description, prepares some top-level information about the product, it prepares some specification about the product, so it becomes very easy for machine learning to understand what exactly is going there into the description and split it according to the requirement of the product and make sure that Googlers get right information at right place in the description. That was one of the main reasons that we recommended you to use default product description over here against the SEO description. Most of the apps are recommending to use SEO description but we recommend you to use default product description. Now when you press the re-sync button. So depending on the number of products on your store syncing process takes time. Kindly ignore this part as this is a demo account and since it is a demo account, this has got suspended by Google. That's it from us for now in sync settings from Shopify section. We hope it is going to be helpful. If you have any kind of query on any of these options, you can write to us and we will definitely help you. Please subscribe to our channel if you are interested to learn more about Google AdWords and other kinds of digital marketing. We are working to start a completely free course on YouTube, that will help you learn digital marketing through Google, Facebook, and other marketing channels. Please refer to our other related help videos. See you again in another video.